who are experiencing a, an issue that they find important and you work with them to conduct research and use and the information that you find from that research you use towards some action or actions. And so I come as a collective working with a group of other researchers, Michelle Fine and Madeline Fox, as well as a whole host of young people from throughout New York City uh, in all five boroughs. But first I just want to go over, uh, this is a, a slightly older study from 2008 and 2009. And so during that time I looked at the NYPD data on stop and frisk. And this is called a histogram, just looked at a histogram of those who are stopped and by what age. And what you'll notice is that it's skewed to the left in that there's a big hump in the ages of 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 25. The majority of the stops are sort of somewhere between 14 and 25. And uh, what that tells me and should tell you is that this is a policy that's particularly geared towards young people. And so that's why we worked with, I'll just go back, I made the ages 14 to 21, I sort of made that red, just to show you that's why we chose to work with young people between those ages, 14 and 21, uh, because those are the folks who are still in school or, or could be in school and are being affected by this policy. An important statistic that if you were here earlier, but I'll just reiterate, an important statistic is that 90% of those who are stopped are neither given a summons or arrested. In other words, what NICLU calls an innocent stop. So nine out of 10 uh, are stopped but haven't done anything wrong. And so it's geared towards, it's a policy geared towards young people and the majority of, of young people who are stopped are indeed innocent. Uh, but these are not just neutral stops, these are these are stops that make you question, you know, what, what does it mean to grow up with such heavy policing? What does it mean to grow up surveilled? And so I just want to show you these statistics from the UF 250 form, which is when the police make stops in New York City. For many of the stops, they have to fill out a UF 250 form. And on that form, you can check off, or you have to check off why someone was stopped, why they were frisked, if they were indeed frisked, why they were searched, if you use physical force, what kind of physical force. And so what I want to show you here are, these are the types of physical force that can be checked off on the UF 250 box. So pepper spray, handcuffing, baton, uh, baton, suspect against a wall or a car. And the bars represent those young people between the ages of 14 and 21 who experienced these types of physical uh, force by police, but were innocent. So you can see 65% of those young people where a police officer drew a firearm had done nothing wrong. 81, 82% of those young people who were put on the ground had done nothing wrong. They were, given a, they were not given a summons uh, or arrested. 30, almost 40% of those who were hit with a baton had done nothing wrong. So these are not, for many of the moments in young people's lives, these are not neutral stops. These are stops that sort of vibrate throughout communities. They certainly affect your day. They, they affect your mother, your sister, your father, your grandparents, your friends, right? And so we have to ask the question, particularly those who, those uh, youth of, of color who are living in uh, neighborhoods that the police are sort of heavily surveilling, what does it mean to grow up police? And so that's why we worked with young people uh, to come up with a survey from their eyes, from their perspective, on what it's like to engage with the police. So at the Graduate Center, which is part of the City University of New York, which is on 34th and 5th, we put out a call. About 40 or 50 young people from throughout the city came to the Graduate Center for what we called a, a sort of a summer camp or retreat. And in during that time, we split up into four rooms because we wanted to not just know, we, wanted, we just didn't, we didn't 
want to only know about policing, we want to understand your experiences with health, your experiences with education, your experiences with mental health and depression and all sorts of things that sort of are important in young people's lives. So we had a room for each of those categories and we had lots of people, lawyers, researchers, young people, community activists, all in one room in, in the, and just discussing the issue. And by doing that, we started coming up with, well, if we want to understand these areas, what are the questions that we should ask from a young person's perspective? And so this is just an example. We would then sort of use a whiteboard, put, start putting down a draft of the questions, and we'd present back and sort of hash it out. Ultimately, these are the, I think, 10 questions that young people came up with for our, what we call the Polling for Justice survey. And the 10 questions, which I think is really important, involve in school and out of school, because the young people said that you know, they wake up, they walk to school, they could get stopped by police, but then when they're in school, with school safety agents, which is, as Nyklu reported, the fifth largest police force in the country, they also can have experiences with police and school safety agents. So, so there are three boxes, it never happened, it happened in school or it happened outside of school. And then you'll notice that some of the questions were not just negative. There were a lot of young people who said, I've had positive experience with the police, and I think that's really important. It's not all negative. And so we've included positive experiences, negative experiences, and these were broken down by sort of phys negative physical experiences, negative verbal experiences, legal experiences, and even sort of sexualized experiences, which unfortunately we know can sometimes happen. Then we all went out in each borough and handed the survey out. It was also online. And you can see here, we collected people or young people from nearly everywhere throughout the city. The only place where we weren't as hot on was in Staten Island. But the demographics that we collected are very close to the demographics uh, at, in the school district at the time. So in terms of a representative sample, it wasn't random, but it but it seems to be somewhat representative of the young people uh, between 2008 and 2009. So what did we find from these questions regarding the police? Well, what you're looking at here on the left-hand side where it's yellow, these are the young people who experienced these things within the last six months of their life, right? And then it's broken down by thematic category, positive police contact, negative sexual police contact, negative physical, negative legal, and then negative verbal. And so you can see 24% of the young people in the last six months have reported that they were helped by police. Around 17% told us that they were given a second chance by police. But also you can see some other concerning things like 18% um, had gotten a ticket, 33% a ticket, felt like they were told to move in a disrespectful way, 23% said they were stopped by police for questioning, uh, 5.6% said they said they were strip searched. And so if we just sort of collapse this into themes, so if they experience any one of these things, we'll say that they were they had a negative legal experience in the last six months. And if they experienced any one of the I was frisked or pared down or I was searched, they experienced a negative physical contact, then it looks like this. These are the different categories, and then just I had some sort of negative experience in the last six months, and I had a positive experience. So in the last six months, the young people, 48% of the young people said they had some sort of negative encounter with police. And also 34% said that they had some sort of positive encounter with police. And if you just look at those who had negative police experience and you broke it down, the most common category was having some sort of verbal experience, then legal, then physical, and then Unfortunately, a full 12% said they had some sort of sexualized contact with police. Unfortunately, by race, in each of the categories, we find that those who identify as multiracial, and this is a category that's not on the official NYPD data, those who identify as multiracial, black, African American, or Latino, are much more likely to experience these categories proportionally than those who are white or those who identify as Asian and Southeast Asian. But the thing that was most surprising for us, and again, not data that, can, that we can derive from the official NYPD data, is that we asked young people if they identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, or questioning. Uh, because some of the young people are still sort of figuring out where they are or, or how they understand their sexuality. 
and those who identify as straight. And what we found is that young people who identify as LGBTQ were much more likely to have reported negative police contact. They were much more likely to report negative sexualized police contact, more likely physical, more likely verbal, and even legal. And if we break that down by borough, in some places like the Bronx, almost 90% of the young people who identify as LGBTQ uh, in our survey uh, had a negative encounter with police. And in Brooklyn, almost 70%. So a, a much larger proportion than we would have had, uh, we, we would have imagined. And again, not data we would have collected, uh, that's being collected by the NYPD at the moment. And so, I'm a psychologist, so we wanted to know if, if you feel like you're, if you're living in neighborhoods where there's a lot of police, what does that feel like? What is the psychology behind that sort of insecurity? And so we asked a couple of questions, and I broke the negative and positive stops into a different type of category. This time, it can be in the four categories. One category, I didn't have any police contact in the last six months. Another category is I only had positive police contact. And then there's a category I had both positive and negative, and then only negative contact. With the idea, if to the extent that you're engaging with police and the type of engagement with police, does that influence or is, that, is there a relationship between that and how you understand the criminal justice system, your attitudes towards police, your, uh, your attitudes towards seeking police for help, etc. And so what we find here is that the majority of the young people said that they never stress out or worry about police. But those who had no contact with police or those who had positive contact with police were more likely to say they never worry about police than those who had positive and negative and particularly negative. In other words, you're much more likely to, to not stress or worry about police if you only have positive or you had no contact. And I just want to note this little blip. It's a very small percentage, but it's a pattern throughout that those who only had positive police contact were slightly more likely not to, to worry. And even though it's small, the pattern is throughout, and so it makes us wonder, does positive police contact have particularly interesting positive influences on young people? The next one is on the criminal justice system, and it's the same relationship, where no contact, more likely not to worry about the criminal justice system, and negative contact, more likely to worry about the criminal justice system. And then we asked a question, in general, the police in New York City protect young people like me. And so if you had negative police contact, you were more likely to not buy into that statement. In fact, the majority didn't buy into that statement. But if you had neg no contact, or, and here again, this little blip with the positive, the positive contact with police, it kind of it kind of rises a little bit, and you feel like maybe the police are, are working for you a bit more. And finally we asked, would you turn to a police officer or a school safety agent uh, when you had a problem or a hard time? Most of the young people said no. Particularly, you'll see, uh, if, if uh, they had negative police contact. But here again, if they had positive contact with police, they were slightly more likely. And here, this was both positive and negative, so if they had any type of positive, they were slightly more likely then to turn the police 